Let's get back to stocks, which are still at session lows. Well, ac- I'm sorry, coming off session lows and actually about session highs right now with the Dow down 67. Uh, it is breaking what has been about a four-week win streak. And that appears to be powered somewhat by better-than-expected third-quarter earnings. 82% of companies have beaten estimates, the most in two years, but only 61% beat on revenue. And that gap that you see on your screen there is the widest in nearly eight years. Earnings overall were up about 7% from a year ago, while revenues were up only one and a half percent. But my next guest says he's not worried about corporate profits or the consumer going forward. Neil Hennessy is here. He's chief market strategist and portfolio manager at Hennessy Funds. Good to see you. Hi, Kelly. Welcome. What kind of mood are you in? What, what do you think about it? It's got the holiday the, season. I'm always in a good mood. The, and do you think that generally people have gotten a little more constructive on the market than they were a month or two ago? Well, I think you got to put it in perspective. Like I've always said, you're talking about eight companies have run this market, and, and that's it. And then all of a sudden, what, two weeks ago, went to the Magnificent Seven. And if you go back to 1960, too young for you, they made a movie, The Magnificent Seven. <laughs> and if you go and check that out, there are only three left at the end of the movie. Uh-oh. So now you start to think, okay, who's going to be left out of the Magnificent, Magnificent, Magnificent Seven? But there's 492 other companies in there. Like you're looking on the S and P, mm-hmm. they're beating earnings. They're down on revenue, means they're control- controlling their costs. They're looking to the bottom line, and that's where the cash flow is good. That's where the profits are good. That's where you're going to have higher dividends, buybacks. The reason I'm, I'm kind of pounding the drum on the revenue side of it is because I wonder if that's a leading indicator. In other words, if you see revenue, both the number of beats slowing, but also just nominal one and a half percent revenue growth means it's negative in real terms. So that's going to be a conundrum, isn't it, for companies going forward? Well, revenue's a truer number than earnings per share. I will give you that, and that's what we always follow. So uh, slowdown in revenue is is a, to be expected because the economy's not grown as fast as it was. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that these companies, most all of them, don't understand looking to the future and say, well, if we can put the cash away, and there's so much cash on the sidelines, mm-hmm. even for the consumer, I know you were just talking about the seg- segment before, it nine, ten billion dollars in purchases is a fair amount of money in one day. Yeah. Okay. So the consumer's in good shape, maybe a little fragile with their psychological uh, outlook. But they're in good shape. You're going into holiday season that historically has always been good, no matter how much negative news comes out. <laughs> Which companies, I know you tend to look at some under the radar names, which are the ones you feel most comfortable, confident about right now? Well, I don't feel comfortable with those eight. Yeah. Because essentially, on, on average, you're selling at 11.5 on a price to sales. Wow. Which is 10 times more than we would ever pay. Yeah. So you could look at a Sprouts which is farmer's market. Now, I hadn't been in a Sprouts till just the other day. I'm not sure I ever have. They're very clean, very nice looking. It's just a farmer's market inside. The And you think about uh, budgets being squeezed. Well, there's a lot that you can do with fruits and vegetables and pasta. You got to have the <laughs> pasta in there. But essentially, you can save money and make great meals. No, and farmer's market makes almost $3 a share and doesn't pay a dividend. Wow, because what you've said is actually the same that we heard from a B of A analyst last week who said he's noticed by um, cart turns that people are leaving the inside of the grocery store and going to the outsides because the outsides have seen more deflation. The inside, they're still paying 30 percent more than they used to for cereal, for instance. Well, that's true. I mean, you you see inflation is starting to flatten out, but that doesn't mean prices are going to come back to where they were three years ago. Right. Meat's up, poultry's up, everything's up, and it might flatten out, and that might be a good inflation number, but that's not the real number that's hitting the family. But I like that Sprouts is one way you think people could play this. Where else? Where else are you, you excited know, about? Um, it's not really exciting. It's sort of like, you know, a coin-operated laundry machine, a uh, laundromat, but essentially you could look at comfort systems, hmm. and it's just uh, air conditioning, heating, ventilation systems for commercial, industrial, government jobs. It's not exciting, but they make almost $8 a share in earnings wow. and pay a dollar in dividends. Wow. And so you start to look at these type of companies, not the high flyers, because we've seen that before. We saw it in 2007, eight in real estate. You saw it in the dot-com in the late 90s. I mean, the more things change, the more they stay the same.